Welcome back to This Day Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. The Senate has approved a sum of 22.7 trillion naira that was spent by the executive arm of government without the initial approval of the National Assembly. In this matter, now, it's not just the uh, upper legislative chamber, even the House of Representatives approved the request by the federal government. Senate leader Ibrahim Gobi presented a report on the floor of the Senate. The Senate leader said some of the beneficiaries of the funds include Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Nigeria Bulk Electricity Trading Company, Azura Power West Africa, Niger Data, Holding, uh, Niger Data Power Holding Company, and Akugas Limited. The $20.7 trillion is money borrowed by the federal government from the Central Bank of Nigeria through the Ways and Means advances. The Lagos State Government has also announced the arrival of the first set of electric buses for the state's mass transit scheme. This is the outcome of a memorandum of understanding signed with Wando Clean Energy and Chinese electric vehicle maker Yutong Electric. Charging spots and a future assembly plant are part of the plans. Governor Babajide Sonwulu tweeted that the introduction of the buses is part of his government's increased effort to modernize every sector of the state as well as reduce carbon emissions. In the wake of the announcement of the electric buses deal, a chartered accountant and candidate of the Action Democratic Congress during the recent governorship election in Lagos, Funsho Doati, wrote a letter to the Lagos State Government and demanded a stay of action on his partnership with Orlando PLC over the electric mass transit buses. In an open letter dated May 4, 2023, and addressed to Okpai George, special advisor to Governor Sonwulu on public-private partnerships, Doherty said the project lacked transparency. According to him, it was not evident from the information so far disclosed in the public domain that the laws and provisions relating to PPPs were either complied with or not applicable prior to commencing the partnership. Joining us now to look at these issues on the front burner is Development and Management Consultant, Dr. Boniface Chizia. Dr. Chizia, good to have you again on this live this Sunday talk show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Yes, yes. Well, quickly, two issues yes. out there, and I just need your take yes. uh, on those two issues. Mm. Let's start with Ways and means. Yes. Economists, you know, like uh, Tilewa Adibajo, mm. have said that, look, ways and means, going before, beyond the threshold in the uh, Financial Responsibility Act, the 5% threshold, is in itself an illegality. And a second, it's also the way the... Uh, Nigerian government has handled it in violation of Section 38 of the CBN Act, 2007, as it were. And now, the National Assembly says it has approved a plan by the federal government to securitize this $22.7 trillion. The DMO has issued a statement saying, oh, this is the best thing that has ever been done. Other economists have said, the National Assembly cannot endorse an illegal act. What do you think? Well, I think that uh, if you ask me, there are lots of uh, lack of adequate understanding of uh, what it's all about. I think that's essentially what, uh, what one can say at this point in time. Uh, this is money that has been, you know, it's been borrowed, it's been spent. And if there were any abuses, you know, those abuses have been perpetrated. You know, I think that's... Uh, if you ask me, I think we should give a kudos uh, to the president, you know, that uh, he even cared, you know, to try and, uh, if you like, address the problem. And that's exactly what this is all about. And so uh, this money has been spent. And people talk about ways and means. Uh, they find that ways and means are monies that are given to, isn't to the executive when the executive is in a bind in terms of uh, having resources, you know, to meet some urgent Expenditure, fiscal deficit. Yeah, deficit. So you know, so you know, uh, CBN does, does uh, you know credits your account. That's what it is essentially. They don't who say print money. It doesn't CBN doesn't print money. So you just credit your account and you start spending. 
And so when that happens, you know, I mean, uh, people talk about uh, if you have salaries to pay and you can't pay, uh, how, how, do you, how are you going to manage your workers? I think those are some things we have to, you know, put in context. So it's, it's, it's happened. What has happened is wrong because uh, the, uh, the, the regulation and the law and that guides extension of this uh, type of finance, uh, what the terms of the law has been breached severally. Uh, yeah, like you said in your, in your comments, you know, that the, we are supposed to extend more than 5% of the revenue uh, the previous year, as a ways and means. And then you don't extend again until what the one you said you've extended has been settled. But of course, you know, we went through crisis, we had, we had uh, COVID, we had so many, uh, it's been there, we have issues, uh, so revenue flows and so on. And then that's, uh, so it's, it's gone on. Otherwise, it couldn't have gone up, up to 22.7 trillion naira. That's quite a... Uh, Substantial. So that money is been spent, you know. So uh, and uh, the, uh, the president is trying to clean up the urgent, urgent the stable. Essentially, what the president is trying to do is to take this to market, to securitize is that you, you you get the public to finance it, to buy it over, and so the public buys it over, and then you get the money and put it back, you know. And then of course you now have a longer uh, uh, term uh, debt, which, which you now owe the public. And so you're not dealing with the public. The public, when, as, the, as the, the instruments mature and, and they come, you know, they want to claim, they, they want to, you know, some money you pay. But that gives you, it gives you some latitude. It gives you some time, you know, so for you to... Well, except that, um, Dr. Chizia, the, yes. the department, the debt management office is saying this is not going to be through issuance of bonds and securities to the public. The, the DMO is very clear. That is the same CBN that will take up those securities and bonds. And that's not part of the function of the CBN. Well, I read that, uh, uh, Ruben, I'm at a loss. I don't know what that means. Because uh, to secretize, CBN gave you the money. So why are you going back to CBN to issue, give them, uh, give them uh, uh, bonds? It doesn't make sense to me. But if you, if you read that very well, that's a, a, sub, a subtext. They're going to give, uh, issue some, maybe for, for bookkeeping purposes, they're going to issue some... Uh, uh, certificates to CBN, maybe for, 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 uh, allow them to keep their books in there. But they are still going to go to the market. So uh, I looked at it. So it's a second stage. You have to go to market. Because, uh, otherwise, then how are you going to get, why are you going to rake in the funds? So CBN has printed the money, more or less, and given it to you. Then if you go by the CBN, you've not addressed any. The issue has not been addressed. You know, so um, it doesn't make sense. So I think that uh, I still go to the market. But what do you think of a situation where the CBN, the DMO, government departments, even the legislature, break the law. Mm. You know, I think and then you say, it's okay, I mean, the money has been spent. If they, they keep breaking the law, where, where is the end to it? <laughs> you are encouraging impunity, Dr. Chizia. Well, I think that, uh, well, I, that we don't want to encourage impunity. What one is saying is that we have to be realistic about this. You know, to say that, you know, it's, it's happened. What's happened is not, it's not, it's not the best. It's not the best. And like we did say, you know, we should try and, and play, you know, by, uh, by the rules. Now, that has not happened. And so, but so, you, uh, two runs don't make a, make a right. So, um, something has happened, something that has been done and that has been abused, the process has been abused, we're not kept to the rules and regulations. And then uh, we're not trying to tidy up. And so, if you're trying to tidy up, and then the president is trying to do this, look, the president will have just walked away and gone to, is it Niger? He says he's going to. You know, <laughs> he, just, he just walked away. What happened to him? Uh, he just leaves the central bank, you know, to stew in their juice. Okay, that's all that will happen. So uh, maybe they, they will try and get back to central bank and so on and so forth. So, but he's trying to do this. So and they're trying to tidy up. Uh, but I think there will be lots of confusion, even with DMO. Uh, uh, because what should happen is that the, the uh, ways and means, it should be part of our debt stock. It's not something you put, you don't package it and put it on the side and say, this is ways and means. So as you, as, you are, as you are aggregating the debt of the nation, you know, as you do it uh, you know, on an ongoing basis, it's part of it. And so if, if we are going to uh, securitize 22.7 trillion naira, that, that should not come off our debt stock. But what you now, if you, if you read what's, what's out there, they're saying that this is going to push up the debt, our debt volume to... Uh, 70 trillion and so on and so on. 77. 77, it's in seven, but so, but so there's some confusion there. It should, it should not be so. What, this, that amount, maybe it's 77, and then as we now secretize this, that should now come off 
our death and okay, death token. Okay, but the securitization, we have told, has been given a 40-year window. Yes, yes. That, so for it. the next 40 years, yes. Nigerians will be paying yes, but then so for debts incurred by the Buhari administration for the next 40 years. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, yes, 40 years, but that's why it lightens the burden. In the sense that you know, 40 years, so it's stretched out for you to pay over 40 years period, and so that's exactly what it is. But like you already said, if there's some uh, intergeneration uh, disequity <laughs> in this conversation because uh, the, uh, people are going to those coming behind us. Maybe most of us must have gone <laughs> by then. <laughs> okay, I see yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> Increasingly, Nigerian economies are becoming like lawyers. Yeah, well, <laughs> when you put four or five lawyers in a room, you will have five different, different opinions. Views, yeah. All of them quoting the same law. Yes. So economies are going in that direction too. Yeah, Quite interesting. Economies are known for on this hand and on the other hand and so on and so on. <laughs> <laughs> on one hand, on the other hand. hand. Yes. In between is uh, voodooism. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you say so. Yeah, well. Uh, okay, but let me ask you about electric cars. Yes. The governor of Lagos State says he's bringing electric cars. There is uh, an MOU that has been signed with uh, Orlando Clean Energy, the company is called. And we're told that these uh, electric buses will address the challenge of uh, sustainable transportation in Lagos. Do you think Nigeria is ready for electric uh, Buses, even when we don't have electricity. You know, I have, I have, a, I live in the Kipers one. As a, a traffic light, I go through, and uh, those have some traffic condition at that junction. And at some point in time, they managed to put some light, uh, traffic lights, and it, it, it helped us a bit. And now today, now and again, you can't take it for granted that when you go through that traffic light, it's going to be on. So we're talking of sustainability, and that's we are talking of you know the power supply, electric power supply. We know what we go through. You know, I mean, you can't you can't survive in this in this environment. You don't have a backup. You know, have generators and so these days some of us have shut down our diesel generators because we can't afford the price of diesel. But so so when you see when when you, when, when you hear that now you start asking yourself you know what 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 should be the priority? You know the problem you have in Lagos is that you have congestion in Lagos. You know, you, you don't have a road network, you know, so they, you don't have movement, and they, uh, uh, people will lose lots of productivity because you know we are stuck in the, in the traffic. And so, if we're, if we're going to solve, try and solve the problem of traffic in Lagos, I was thinking that we were talking about intermodal transportation. You know, so we are talking of going by water and by rails and so on and so forth. Um, but then when you now bring electric electric vehicles, and then it you raise it raises an eyebrow and you say to yourself, you know. Um, how reliable they're going to be charging they're going to be charging and so on the charging points and, and I hear it's so expensive capital intensive um, you know so I think it's, it's something that's it's happening uh, we don't know what's driving it but I think that uh, uh, and the issues that have been raised about like you said in the presentation about uh, the transparency you know surrounding the whole uh, the whole uh, the whole scheme but I think that it's, uh, it's something that we'll just wait and see we are talking about uh uh, zero, net zero, net zero. And we're saying at 2016, so we're looking at emissions and so on. And we're saying that electric uh, vehicle, buses will assist us in that area. But I think that uh, um, uh, for me now, I can't see the priority in electric vehicles. Well, the main point which you alluded to, uh, the point made by Mr. Funcho Doati, yes, is that Wando Clean Energy. That is with uh, that is partnering with the Lagos State Government. In fact, has not submitted audited reports for three years. And that the uh, the company has issues with regard to transparency. And that why would the Lagos State Government go into partnership with elect uh, with electric uh, 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 electric buses with a company that has issues of transparency and accountability? And his argument is that PPP should have at its center transparency, yeah. accountability, and to that extent, he says this partnership should be abandoned. Well, I think well, I think that on the pilot, what we have is that they're on the pilot scheme, pilot stage. So we we'll, uh, we'll hope and see. But I think that there are other interests, you know. So Orlando, we know we know what what interests, you know, that behind Orlando. and so people are saying that, you know. So uh, again. Which, which company is this now? Does, uh, does it tax in Lagos? The company does it tax in Lagos. Alpha Beta. Alpha Beta. So I think that people are saying that it's, uh, there's some relationship, some connection in that direction. Well, I, I don't have my facts. 
Um, so if, if that, that is the case, uh, again, we're not dealing at arm's length. We're not dealing at arm's length, and uh, there might be some issues. So, and that might, so when you have such situation, you're not dealing at arm's length, and then so uh, you find that you cut corners. Uh, so, uh, do, you, do, you, do you suspect that uh, Funcho Doati, having been a gubernatorial candidate in the uh, 2023 elections, uh, may be playing politics? Or do you think he's speaking as a professional? He well, too have any background in finance? Well, I think politics is almost over. <laughs> is it over? Uh, well, I think so. I, uh, we wait for the tribal, tribal start sitting from tomorrow. We we'll wait for them and see what, what is going to happen. After that, we all go to back to sleep until another four years. And that's that's the pattern in Nigeria, you know. So I think that he's he's uh, he might not be there for the next four years, you know. So, but I think people have spoken about him, and have spoken well about him as somebody who has integrity. We, we all have a joint stake in, in trying to uh, protect Nigeria, but I think it's not it's not it's not going to be a walk in the park. Um, we need to protect Nigeria. Lots of things have been done. Uh, there's too much of a personal interest in what we do, and then we should begin to try and uh, foreground uh, Nigerian interests, interests of Nigerians, uh, you know, and uh, begin to look ahead. And uh, 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 try and be a bit more realistic and see to yourself, you know, all these monies we are accumulating, uh, how much money are we going to spend, really, in a lifetime? And so it, it's good for us, you know, to begin to think about leaving the legacies, you know, uh, making, making the situation better, you know, when you, what you met on ground. I'm sure we cannot say that about the outgoing government in terms of uh, uh, where, where they met us and where they're leaving us. So I think that those are things that should matter. You want to improve uh, the quality of life of the people. That's, that's essential. Well, Dr. Chizia, before I let you go, should electric buses, electric vehicles show up on Nigerian roads someday? Are you likely to buy an electric car or ride an electric bus? Rupert, can I afford it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hearing things like five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm not well, saying are, at gonna... this stage you should be enjoying life. Um, well, try life, quiet life, just some contentment. That's all about life. You know, once you can eat, put food on the table, and you can meet your bills. You know, and, and that's it. Yeah. But you never know. You may run into money tomorrow. So if you run into heavy cash, well, I don't know. You buy an Ruben, I don't think I don't think I have that ambition. Really. Mm. I don't have the ambition. You know, I, just, I don't have, have regular life. life. The life I have today is okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By On that note, I'd like to thank you very much, <laughs> Dr. You. Chizia, for joining us. It's thank good you. to know that some Nigerians are contented yes. and they don't want to have everything.